Thank you for joining us at World to Come Ministries, where we will be looking at Bible readings, Bible studies, and looking forward to the world to come. Hello, welcome to World to Come Ministries. My name is Andrew Patch, and we are going to talk about Elijah the prophet. We're going to look in the book of First Kings. We're going to start in chapter 16, and we're going to read about a transition of leadership. So, verse 29 in chapter 16 of 1 Kings, And in the thirty and eight year of Asha, king of Judah, began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel, and Ahab the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab the son of Amari did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethabal, king of Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In his days did Hale of Bethlehite build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof, and Abraham his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof, and his youngest son, Zegub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. And please apologize for all these words. I am not fluent in these names and places, but the story is so wonderful. The, the story that this is setting up, because it not only is talking about Ahab, He's starting his reign of Israel, and not only is he starting it, but he's starting it by angering God, by worshiping false um, idols. He's worshiping Baal. He married somebody he wasn't supposed to marry. She brought the idols. I mean, it. if you think about it, he is not doing a very good start of his forefather king. He is disregarding God. And when you tell God to take a back seat, God is not going to just sit by and say, okay. God is amazing and he is going to judge. And as we see here in verse, or well, in chapter 17, as we see the entrance of Elijah. So we're going to look at verse 17. Or well, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. So, the first thing we hear of Elijah, Elijah says, You're an evil king worshiping Baal. God is not going to let it rain only by my word, which is, a, is an amazing power. I wish I had that power. There's a lot of times I wish I could control rain and crops and, oh, that would be awesome. But anyhow, um, verse 2, And the word of the Lord came unto him, and saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and 
I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So if you think about that for a minute, God says, get out of here. Go sit by this brook, wait out this drought that you have told Ahab that you, is going to happen. And not only are you going to sit there, but I'm going to make sure you're fed every morning, every evening, and I'm going to have the ravens deliver it. I mean, talk about, you know, trying to order a pizza. This is a lot better. Comes straight to you. So we look, we see that, so he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, nor for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So we're seeing that Elijah is protected away from the king's power. We see that he's by a brook. He's being fed. The brook dries up and God says, I will still provide. Follow me. So he, he follows. We're going to look at verses 8. Um, at verse 8, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zerapath which belongeth to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. So God sent Elijah to this widow woman, and this widow woman says, I would love to help you, but I'm literally going to make my last meal and then die. I mean, God provides in people that are not kings. They're not, she's not well off. She, she's a regular, everyday village woman. So let's see what happens with, you know, with this story. So Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, Neither shall the cruise of oil fail unto the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So he says, hey, God has said that your meal is going to stay. It's not going to spoil. It's going to be there. You're going to have it for future meals. And your oil is going to be there. And the, the thing that I find the most amazing about this story is she obeyed she didn't question she didn't drag her feet she obeyed so let's see what happens here when she obeys and she went and did according to the saying of elijah and she and he and her house did eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the lord which he spake by Elijah. So God provided. God provided for Elijah and he provided for this widow woman and her son. Let's see what happens next. And it comes to pass after these things that the son of the woman 
The mistress of the house fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my son to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into the loft where he abided and laid with him on his own bed. This is the interesting part. Elijah didn't just say, kid be healed. He called on the Lord. The Lord gets the credit for this story. So as we see here, He cried, and he cried unto the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn, by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times, and cried unto the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him into his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. I love it. I, I I don't know how much more faith that that widow woman had. She obeyed the Lord because of Elijah. Elijah spoke the word. Elijah translated, but she followed and she accepted. And Elijah was able to work that miracle of the meal never running out, the oil never running out, the 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 son to be saved. Elijah is that miracle worker, but it's all because of God. Thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to check back and we will continue the story of Elijah.